never been camping, you will have fun, said Mrs. Rogers. My literacy program is what I would describe as a balanced literacy program. And what that means to me is that I have a, a multitude of strategies that I use. And I try to make sure that each strand of the language arts framework is addressed every day in uh, many different ways. And also that things are being modeled, things are, are being guided, and, and the children are doing things independently. So in the reading strand, we would have times when I read to them, times when we read together, and times when they read alone. In the writing area, there would be times when I'm modeling writing for them with the concepts about print, times when we're writing together and I'm scaffolding their learning and it's a guided situation. And then every day they do independent writing too. Let's do the sound game. Take the beginning sound off your name and what are we good what sound are we going to put at the beginning? Mm, 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 mm. Would you take the mm, the first sound off of your name and put a mm on the beginning and raise your hand when you can tell me what your name is? Jake, what would your name be? Make. Make. That's a real word, huh? How about Kathy? Math. Mathy. You know math a lot. Katie, what would yours be? Matey. Matey. Kristen. Mistin. Mistin. Christina. Mistina. Mistina. How pretty. So during the um, attendance or the roll call, I like to use the children's names to do some phonemic work. The names are the very personal thing to them, so that's something that they have a direct connection to and they love it. So often I will have them take the first sound off of their name and put the, another child's beginning sound on their name. So it really gets them to start thinking about words as being divided up into sounds. Aaron, what would your name be? Marilyn. Marin. Abraham, what Mabraham. would Abraham. Abraham. Joseph? Mosef. Mosef. That's great. John Tyler, what would yours be? Mon Tyler. Mon Tyler. What if we put it on both of your names? Mon Tyler. One of the values of doing this activity with the kids is that it really helps them think about the sounds that blend together to make up words, the phonemic awareness part of hearing the sounds and being able to segment the sounds and substitute another sound. So within the activity, they're actually doing a lot of work uh, with learning how words break out into oral sounds, which then can be later on converted to a sound symbol relationship. How about Edgar? Medgar. Very Medgar. nice. Medgar. How many people do we have whose name doesn't change today? Worship. Abraham. Michelle B and Michelle S. Michelle B's and name Matthew. would stay the same. Michelle S's name Matthew. would stay the same. Matthew and, then, Melissa. and Melissa. All through the quiet forest, sleeping animals were waiting for spring. They slept under the snowy ground, under the frozen pond, and in other hidden places safe from the frost and from their enemies. One of the strategies that I use is uh, a read aloud. This would be reading to the children the modeled part of the reading strand where I'm actually reading a book aloud to the children just for the joy of listening to the book. Um, I choose the books carefully. Uh, we read quality literature like Charlotte's Web and Wind in the Willows and we try to make that thematic. And sometimes I'll choose a book that has heavy content that might be above the children's reading level that I want them to experience such as the tree frog book that we're reading right now. Tree frog slept on. He was in no hurry. The warm weather brought out the first of the flies and the gnats. Swallows came back from the south and skimmed across the pond with clicking bills, catching mouthfuls of insects. Reading aloud to the children is an important strategy to model reading how language sounds, how fluent language sounds, how rich language can be. And I think it's very important that we read aloud to our classes, to our children every single day. I always encourage parents to make sure that they have that part of their reading time at home, too. Let's see if you can do what that frog did to catch that spider. Stick your tongue out and go. See if you can do that. Stick it out way far. Do you think we could catch a spider with our tongue? Why not? It's not sticky enough. It's not sticky and it's not long enough and we don't. <laughs> at least I don't. Do you? <laughs> We're going to do just like we did with spiders when we learned about arachnids. We're going to start with what we know about frogs and toads. What we want to know. And what we want to know. KWL is a strategy whereby the children and the teacher get together and have a discussion about what they know about a subject, which is the K. 
what they would like to know or what they wonder about the subject, which is the W. And then later on, we revisit it and talk about what we learned, which is the L. And I would like for you to raise your hand if you have something you know is true about <sighs> frogs and toads. Abraham. Um, they jump and they, they, their tongues are long and their tongues are sticky. Are sticky. sticky. And long, did you say? Yeah. And they, long. We have two sentences that we know about frogs and toads already. And, and they swim. Okay, let, let's stop there, Abraham, and let someone else. That's great. They swim. Nika, do you have one? Frogs are green and toads are brown. Great. Frogs are green and toads are brown. Okay, Joseph, do you have a fact about frogs and toads? Um, um, they eat flies. Okay, they eat flies. Look at this. We've got a lot of facts already. We're working with amphibians right now, so when we did our KWL with amphibians, uh, I realized the children had a big storehouse of knowledge about frogs and toads already. Uh, it gave me some direction on where to go with the unit, and it kept me from spending time on things that I knew I didn't need to spend time on. Often the children would ask a question, and I would model not only how to phrase that, but also how to write it down on the chart. So it's a rich strategy that incorporates the modeled writing. Also, we did some shared reading with that, where we all read when we were finished um, what the questions were and what we knew. And we could do some analysis of the text even on what were the tricky vocabulary words and um, what, what things were, were hard to read or to, um, to recognize in the, in the KWL. But let's talk right now about what we want to know. Have you, do you have a question you've always wanted to know about amphibians? Or did our discussion maybe bring something up? Taylor? Do frogs eat spiders? Great. That's a great question. Okay. Abraham? Do frogs eat um, dragonflies? Do frogs eat dragonflies? That's a great question. Okay. Well, let's review what we want to know about frogs and toads because that's going to guide our studies. Everybody, do frogs give you warts? What are amphibians? Do frogs eat spiders? Do all frogs leave the water? Do frogs camouflage? Do frogs kill other frogs? Are all toads brown or gray? And how are frogs and toads different? In my backyard, I have a frog. My mother found him on a log. Okay, let's see if you're right. You think it rhymes, Taylor? How would you expect log to look? In shared reading, the teacher is reading a book to the children and with the children, and it is a shared situation where the children do interact with the text. However, usually the text or the chart or the song or the poem is a little bit above their independent reading level. I called my frog my good friend Jim. My mommy yelled, get rid of him. How would you expect him to look? And you're yeah. right. Today I ask them to predict rhyming words. And often I'll use a post-it note to cover the words so that that adds to the excitement. I could put my finger over it, but it's always fun. They, they like that part. And at the beginning of the year, I usually leave the beginning sound so that it gives them a clue. Um, this time of the year, I could, I could cover the whole word and they could predict. So that would be one of the important strategies that they would use in their own independent reading would be to predict what the word might be. In this case, it was a rhyming word, so not only did they have the picture clue, but they had the structure of the sentence and also what would make sense there to rhyme. I told my dog, his name is Rover, that he would soon be moving Frog thought that it was beautiful. He put it on and jumped for joy. Most teachers have centers, and in my room I do too. I call it workshops. And the way I've set it up in my classroom that works for me is that I have four workshops, and the children know that this is the heart of the literacy time. This is the time when they'll be reading and writing. And my four workshops include the guided reading center. And in order to have that center 
the uninterrupted. The other groups need to be working independently. So we've spent a lot of time with the children uh, to work independently in the other centers. Yesterday you read what? Freddy the Frog. Let's use that today to warm up our reading voices for your familiar book. Go ahead and read at your own pace with your quiet voices. I would say guided reading is the backbone or the heart of my, my program. Uh, the, the key being there being that the children are reading at their independent level, their individual level, and that I am there to, um, to scaffold their learning. Freddy what? Okay, could that be said? Let's look at the beginning sound. Ready? Try. Frogs can't meow. That would make sense, but this isn't can't. Let's look at that. What is that? Can not. Frogs cannot meow. What was this word? Who can meow? <clears throat> Who can meow? Only cats can meow. Good, Michelle. Only dogs can accept. Only dogs can would you show me your favorite part of the book? Okay, what did you choose? Show me your favorite part, too. What did you choose for your favorite part? This part. Tell me why. Because when Freddy says, said Freddy could bark. Fro that frogs can croak. So all the pages said can, can, cannot until that page, and then they said can, huh? What do you like, Kathy? Um... I like because there's two frogs and we're learning about frogs. Yeah, there are frogs there and we are learning about frogs. Isn't that nice when we can have a book in our guided reading group that's about what we're studying about? That's exciting. Uh, in guided reading, I have a group of three to five children that I'm reading with and um, they are, are personally interacting with their own copy of the book. They're individually reading a book that's at their own level. It's not round robin. They are doing their own reading. Uh, while they're reading, I'm closely monitoring each one of them, which um, affords me the opportunity to individually help them. They know if they get stuck on a word or they get to a tricky part, they put their finger on the word or they slow down, and I can just zero right in on that child and help them work through it. I don't tell them the word, but I help them work on the strategy that I think might most help them uh, read the word. Uh, the prompts that I give them are directly correlated to my assessment of the strategies that they're using and the cues that they're using or not using. So if a child is having a hard time uh, reading because they're not looking at the picture, I'll give a prompt for, well, what do you see here? If a child's having a hard time with the word, they're looking at the picture, the picture isn't giving them a clue, I will prompt them to look carefully at the beginning sound of the word. So it's really having a lot of tools in your toolbox and knowing when to use them with each child. And what we're going to do now is we're going to read a book you haven't seen before. Ready for a new one? Mm -hmm. Okay. This is going to be a really cool one. First thing I want you to do is just look at the cover and see if you can figure out what you think this book might be about. Oh, let's look at the picture rainbow. too. Oh, you see a rainbow? I a rainbow in the classroom. It looks like a classroom, doesn't it, Jake? And, um, Yes. And it's number and it's um, people. You see numbers and people. What do you think that's about? People chart. A people chart, John Tyler yeah. says. Do we have anything like that in our classroom? Yeah. We do. Yeah. What do. What do we have on ours? Do you remember what that one's all about? What your favorite day is. What your favorite day of the week is. And remember we had one about uh, what your favorite season is and what your favorite color is. Well, this is a book about graphs, too. It's about all the different kind of graphs that you can make in the classroom. 
So let's do a picture walk and let's see what kind of graphs we can make in this book. This is written by Roseanne Williams and photographed by Michael Jarrett. What kind of graph do you think they might we be making there? Graph. We can make graphs. Every guided reading lesson begins with a good book introduction of talking about what the book is. Uh, what, it, what it's going to be about, what they see, to bring that prior knowledge and um, the children's experience to each book. And then that gives the teacher an idea of how much scaffolding he or she needs to do. If it's a subject the child knows nothing about, then we know that we need to work some vocabulary and maybe some experiences from the other children into that discussion. Uh, after a good book introduction, you'd go through the book page by page and talk about it, helping the children learn to use different strategies for their reading. They want to look at the picture as well as looking at the words and talk about what might be on the page for their sentence structure and what would make sense to be there. So when they have all three of those strategies working together, it makes for a successful reading of the book. What do you think they might have made? The shoes. They might have made a graph about their shoes here. Yeah, I think you might be right. Oh look at all the different kinds of shoes. I know this book. Okay. What do you think they might have made a graph about in this picture? Your favorite color. It yeah. could be a favorite color, but look closely. What do you see here next to the colors? Making a um, rainbow graph. It could be a rainbow graph because we did that, but this one has January, February, oh, March. The month. It could be their favorite month, or what else could it be that happens in months? It could be months? the month chart. It could be a month chart. What else happens to you in a certain a month? Does anything mm. special happen to you in a certain month? Yeah. In the sun? Christmas? Christmas happens in a special <gasps> month. Sun. After spring yeah. days. How about when you, turn, when you turn seven? Your birthday. You, well, you, they could be making a birthday graph, huh? I don't know. We'll have to see. Okay, what do you think they might be making a graph a about over here? Their favorite colors. Their favorite colors, colors. they might be. Their birthday. This could be the birthday one. Yeah, you're right. Okay, what do you think they might be making a graph here with a school bus? The, that, the, the um, person who drives the bike. It could be who's your favorite bus driver. Yeah. That's a good idea. Look really carefully over here and you'll see a car. Uh -huh and a person, and a bus, and a school. Cool. After uh, the walkthrough with the book, then each child would get a copy of the book and read it independently. Um, some books they devour, and some books you can tell um, they might not be the best choice for them. So uh, I always let the child be the guide. We can make graphs. They're going to make graphs every day in here. Okay. One on three. Okay. On what? When? When did they do it? What day? One. On what day? March. Okay. Let's look at the word. What? What day of the week could that be? On Monday. Uh huh. We made a graph. Uh huh. About shoes. About One. whose shoes? Our shoes. Very nice. <laughs> On Tuesday, we made a, a graph about, about, about our, 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 our what? Our look, look at the picture. And they are making a graph about their, their season. Well, remember they're talking See. January, February, March about their. Let's look but, at the, but, but, but it be, but it have to be. C. It would have to be a s if it was seasons, and it isn't. It's a. B. B. They're B. making a graph about their bur birthday. Good. I. Uh, one. Uh, one. Friday. Three. What are they making? Photograph. Are they made, no, it's not a photograph. They're making a graph. But you're right. Photograph and graph sound the same, don't they? Very nice. On Friday, we made a graph of about. Uh huh. Our 
favorite party. ice cream. Good. Mm. And get your mouth ready to say that sound. Mm. And, and we have we ice had cream. And ice cream party. Ice cream party. Excellent. Good job. Which one would be the most fun graph to make? Which one? The graph about what? Ice cream. Your favorite, favorite ice cream. Ice. What would you choose for your favorite ice cream? Hey, one of these kind of. And at the end of the lesson, we try to have some kind of a follow-up. And this is the kind of graph paper that we use most often. And I was thinking, if you could think of a good question to ask the class, we could make a graph on the graph paper. Can you think of a good question for us to ask the class? What? Um, how much graph paper do you have? Okay. Do you have an idea? Um, when is your birthday? Okay, what month is your birthday in? Do you have one, John Tyler? Um, how do you, how do you, you get to school? How do you what? How do you get to school? How do you get to school? So those are three really good ideas. So let's think about that. And as a follow-up activity, we'll make a graph. And you can go around and ask all the kids in the class your question. You can ask them how you get to school. You can ask them how many grandpas do you have. And you can ask them what? What month? What month is your birthday? Okay, and I'll help you set up the graphs for that. Thanks. <laughs> Kathy, Katie, Kristen, Like, Love, Michelle S, Matthew, Melissa, My, Mom, Michelle, Be Nice. Back over here, everybody. Oh, on. In my classroom, the word wall is um, a strategy that I use for the children on spelling words and identifying words and giving them a word bank for them to use in the classroom. We, with, was, you, you did it. Uh, the words that go up in the word wall are mostly in first grade sight words and some very high interest words like nice and like. And we also started the year with putting their names on the word wall since we did name the name strategy at the beginning of the year and they all can read each other's names. So we added that to the word wall. Okay, I have a new word for you. In fact, I have four new words. Don't look. <laughs> okay. The first word has two sounds. Okay. I'm going to give you the sounds in the reverse order, so you're going to have to really be thinking about the sounds. The ending sound is p. That's the end of the word. That's the end. The beginning of the word has the sound uh. Don't say it. Raise your hand if you can figure it out. The ending sound is p. The beginning sound is a. Uh. Now if I turn it around, it's going to be real easy. It's the beginning sound is a. Uh. The ending sound is p. The word is up. Raise your hand and tell me how you would expect it to see, how you would expect it to look. Uh, raise your hand. Kathy, how would it look? A. Uh. Uh, what, what letter makes the uh, uh? Okay, and you're right, UP. Okay. There's none. We have no U words. We've been working really hard on the uh sound. And here's another uh word. What is that? Umbrella. Umbrella. So spell up for me. UP. The word wall is an important strategy because uh, not only is it very visual for those kids who need that visual correspondence, but it's also a way to interact with the whole class on words that we expect everyone to know how to write and spell and to integrate into their writing. I decide which words go on the word wall by not only using the most frequent words, uh, the hundred most frequent words, but also by looking at their writing. And if we have a class that has a word they use a lot that's misspelled, I know that I need to teach them that word. So the word wall is up um, all year long, like I said, and it's in ABC order. So it's also some pre-dictionary skills and some uh, alphabetizing skills involved. This is a word that doesn't look the way it sounds. It has three letters in it. It has three sounds. But it's one of those words you just have to learn because it's tricky. Okay, It's a number. <laughs> Does anyone want to guess what it might be? Yeah. Joseph, what do you think? One. One. One is a very tricky word. How would you expect one to look? O-N-E. You would. Now, if you were talking about the kind of, like, you won the race, 
then it would be W-O-N. But you're right. This is the number one. And you see it way up there, don't you, Aaron? I see people misspelling one in their, in their morning message journal, so we're going to add it to the word wall. Would everyone look up here and say one and spell it with me? One. O-N-E. And when we add a word to the word wall, we do many activities with it. We try to do activities every day for a week with the words that we put up. For instance, when we first introduce it, we might trace it in the air, uh, we might chant it, we might clap the letters, we might close our eyes and visualize the word, or one of the children's favorites, actually write it on the back of the child in front of them. So this involves the large motor, the fine motor, um, the kinesthetic kids, the visual kids, and tries to, to meet each child's individual way that they're learning how to learn how to read and spell. Let's see if we, do, if we can figure out where one belongs. Tell me when to stop. 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 Oh, thank goodness. Okay. Let's read our O words now. What do we have? We have uh, of, uh, on, uh, one. Does uh, uh, one sound the same as of no. and on? No, it doesn't. We're just going to have to remember when we want to write the number one. Uh, what does it start the look w has one. Wait, wait, wait. Jake first. What? Um, one has a little word in it. It, it does? On. Did you notice that, Melissa? What? One has a little oh. word in it. Oh, I know. Look at that. If you take the E off, one has on inside it. Would that help you remember how to spell the, the, the word one, that it's on with an E? So this is the morning message that I came up with. I came up with, today is the end of winter. And I'm excited about that. So think about punctuation. Wait, wait. My second sentence is going to be, what will begin on Friday. Morning message is a very effective strategy. It's a shared writing activity that we do almost every day. And I give very thoughtful consideration to the message that we're going to write. And it usually has to be something that's interesting to the children, something that's relevant to their lives. I come up with the message because I have things in the message that I want to work with the children with. Who can spell March for me? Amber? M what kind of M do I need? Capital. I need a capital M. A R. And then what makes the ch sound at the end? C A. C H. We've been learning about that. And what day in March is it? Twentieth. Twentieth. Abraham, how would I make a twenty? Twenty and a zero. A, a what and a zero? Two and a two and a zero. That's a twenty. They actually share the writing with me. I have the pen in my hand, but we're talking about what's the first word, what's the first sound in the word, what would you expect to see next, uh, what do I need after this word. So we're really working on the concepts about print. We're working on building the sentence. We're working on the comprehension. Does that make sense? Let's go back and reread it again. What word is next? Okay, finger space, Abraham. Don't let me forget that finger space. And what's the first word? What? What? What's a tough one? Let's think about w what. W. Okay. It starts with a w. A. w. A. What? What sound makes the w? W. 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 What goes with it? For what? What? H. You think it's a W H? You're right. And what kind of W do I need capital here? Capital. There's two W words that have a capital letter. What? Does anybody know the other? It ends with a T. Okay, and you think there's an A in there? You're absolutely right. What is a tricky word because it looks like, Jake? W-A-T. It looks like it should be pronounced at, quat. But it's not, it's what. This is one that we just need to learn. Okay, next word. Will. We have another. And then after the w sound, we have the I, 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 I. You think that's an I? You're right. L and what letter will you expect L to see for the L L two L's at the end? Very nice. Now, begin is a tr tricky one, too. We can chunk begin, can't we? What would be the first chunk in begin? Nika, what would the word be? Begin. What's the first chunk? B. 
We've got our message. You guys did a really good job. Now let's work the text. All eyes on the message. The first thing that let's do is let's try to find uppercase letters. Would everybody look up there and see what they would choose for an uppercase letter? And Abraham, would you circle the uppercase letters that you see? Stand over here, please. Oh, go ahead. He sees. What does he see there? Yeah. On Friday. You see any other uppercase <coughs> letters? Ooh. After we write the message, then we have what we're ca we call working the text. And what that might include is I might ask the children to come up and circle in all the uppercase letters, or I might ask the children to come up and underline the three-syllable word. It could be anything um, from a kindergarten concept uh, up to you know, third or fourth grade. And because I have varied av abilities in, in my classroom, it's really exciting to be able to have a strategy that is open-ended like that, and I can ask different questions for working the text. Would you come oh, yeah. up, Michelle S., and put a circle around the punctuation? Please look with your eyes and see if it's the punctuation that you would circle. What did she, what's she circling right now? What is it, Joseph? A question mark. Yes, good, Michelle. Circle it. That's great. A question mark. Is there another punctuation mark? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. yes, yes. Where would she look for the punctuation? <coughs> at the. At the where, Jake? Where is your punctuation? At the middle. At the middle. In your sentence. Where is it in your sentence? It's at the. At, at the end of your sentence. After we finish working the text and morning message, the children all go back to their desks and do their journal writing. And in their journals, they can write anything that they want, and hopefully they've internalized some of the things that we've been working on in the mini lesson and morning message. And they write independently, and that, that affords me the opportunity to walk around and assist them as they need to be assisted. Do you like school? Yes, I do like school. And where's the end of your sentence there? Yeah, very nice. At the end of writing time, uh, we come back to the rug and we have author's chair because I think it's really important that the children have an audience for their pieces and some place that they can get feedback for what they're writing. March 20th, 1997. I like school. It is cool. Do you like school? Yes, I... I do like school. Do you like your teacher? Yes, but why am I answering all your questions? And show us the picture. She's got talking bubbles. Let me turn them around and you can read them. Question, what, why am I answering all your questions? Because I like you the best. Okay, so she used a question and answer format in her morning message, just like we did in our morning message today. Questions or comments for Nika's writing? Hey, Jake. Jake. I like it in funny. Mm -hmm. I like it because it's really pretty. I like it because I was in it. We're going to do pass the pen. So I want you to think about what sentence we could write today. It could be something that's happening now, something exciting, something that's going to happen, something we're learning about, whatever you'd like. Okay, Christina, what do you think we should write about? We are having a bake sale today. That would be a great sentence. Fantastic. Okay, who else has a sentence they think we should write today? Okay. Edgar, do you have an idea? We are learning about frogs. That's a great sentence. We are learning about frogs. Another strategy that I use in my classroom is called pass the pen, or sometimes I call it interactive writing. And it's actually a guided writing strategy whereby the children come up with a sentence that we're going to write, and the children do the writing. The important thing with pass the pen is that the children come up with a sentence we talk about that sentence, we honor their experience and what they want to write that day, and then we figure out how many words are in the sentence, and then we set about the task of getting it on paper. So we're actually uh, modeling for the whole class and working together, and the children are doing the writing. It's very powerful, the power of the pen, because the children are actually in front of the rest of the class writing a word, and they know that if they make a mistake, it's okay that that's a learning place, 
and that we can cover up the the uh, the mistake and we can correct it. So what's the next one, Aaron? Bake sale. What's is that? Two words or one word? Two. Okay. So what's the first word in bake sale? Bake. Would you tackle bake? Think about how you would expect b bake to look. Okay, very nice. What do you think, you guys? Bake. The back, the back has to be a little bit yeah. back. The back, the back on the B a little bit taller, you think? Yeah. And past the pen, they're actually doing the concepts about print. They're making the decisions if there's enough room at the end of the line and where do they start the next line. They're doing practice with left to right, top to bottom, and um, the other concepts about print that they've seen in Morning Message all year long. Sale. Let's see if she's writing sale the way you would write sale. Okay, very nice. Thank you, Nika. Have a seat. Let's all look at sale. What do you see about sale? Does it look right? Yeah. yeah. She got every single sound. She got the silent letter. She made a capital L. <gasps> Children are always the center of the program, um, taking what the children know and what their strengths are and going from there. So I think um, in summing it up, my, I would say that my literacy program has uh, an excellent balance of reading, writing, speaking, and listening. Uh, with the children, by the children, and modeled by me for the children. You notice she made a capital Oops. L. That's okay. What do we need? Boo-boo tape. Boo-boo tape. Think you can cover up that bottom on that L and make it look like a lowercase L. Boo-boo tape to the rescue. Okay, very nice, Nika.